If you believe that the way you think has some effect on your life, and you think the same thoughts every day, 90% of most people think the same thoughts as they did yesterday. Would you agree then that if you're not waking up every morning being defined by some vision of your future, then pretty much you are going to be living by the memories of your past and you will be predictable in your life. Yes or no? Because the brain is a record of the past. And so, if you're not creating a new future, is it possible that you believe in your past more than you believe in your future? And is it possible then that many people don't want to create a new future because they're more in love with their past than they are with their future? In fact, they romance their past every single day. So then is it possible then that that person in the same brain circuitry, in the same emotions of the past, are viewing their life through the lens of the past? And they're not seeing things how they are. They're actually perceiving and seeing things how they are. And they're telling a story in their mind that's actually causing them to perceive life equal to that story. Are you with me still? So then, you ask that person, so why are you this way? And they say, I'm so glad you asked because I get to talk about my past. And as they talk about the incidents in their past, would you agree then that they're, they're saying, that was the event that changed me and I haven't actually been able to change since that event. I've, that event has defined me as the person I am today. Yes or no? Now, the research on memory says, after a period of time, that story that they tell of their past 50% of it isn't even the truth. So they're making stuff up. They are reliving a miserable life they never even had. Just to reaffirm, to recreate the emotions, to excuse themselves from changing. So then, most people then, they, they may say with the 5% of their conscious mind, I want a new life, I, I want a new relationship, I want a new career, and, or I am healthy. But if 95% of who they are is subconsciously programmed into the past, then that thought of their health, that thought of their wealth is never going to make it to the body because the body is programmed into the past. How many people understand? So then if you teach a person then how to be defined by a vision of the future instead of the memories of the past, then they would have to really start thinking differently. Would you agree? They would have to start making different choices than the choices that they always make. Yes or no? They're going to have to start doing different things and breaking certain habits. And that's going to be uncomfortable. Yes or no? Because the body's going to say, why are we doing this? It's, it's so much more fun suffering than, than going out for a walk into joy. I don't know if I believe in joy. I believe in suffering. The body goes back. And so then a person would have to stop talking certain ways. They would have to start staying away from certain experiences with certain people. You know what I'm talking about, yes? And they would have to examine their emotional state every single day. They'd have to stay conscious of their emotional state because the moment they started feeling suffering, they just disconnected from the energy of their future. They're back to the energy and the emotions of their past. So then, teaching people then how to be defined by a vision of the future every single day means they're going to be uncomfortable. 
Now, it's going to be unfamiliar. There's going to be some uncertainty, and you may not be able to predict the next moment because you're no longer feeling like you. That's the moment you just left the known and you stepped into the unknown. Are you with me still? Now, if the body has been conditioned into the familiar past or the predictable future, and the body has become the mind of the past or the predictable future, would you agree then the body would say, what are you doing? And the body would say, listen, let's get you thinking like you've been thinking. And it starts influencing the mind. And people start hearing the chatter in their head. And if you respond to just one of those same thoughts, you know, like, start tomorrow. You'll never change. It's your ex's fault. It's your mother's fault. If you respond to one of those same familiar thoughts, those same thoughts lead to those same choices which lead to the same behaviors and create the same experiences and produce the same emotions. A person says, oh, this feels right. This feels better to me. No, they're back to the same comfortable self. Yes or no? And this is why change is so hard. So then new thoughts should lead to new choices. New choices should lead to new behaviors. New behavior should create new experiences, and new experiences create new emotions, yes or no? And our research shows that people who do that in four days, four days, they change their gene expression. Four days. Four days. And don't you know, I know, in the first day, they don't want to do it, and they want to go back to laying down, and they hate me, and they're going to write an email, you know, it's... I'm a, I'm, I'm a liar, you know, all that stuff. They want to quit, you know. And I want you to know that there's no such thing as a bad meditation. There's just you overcoming you. And you can do it now, or you can wait. But now is the new later. So then, if your personality creates your personal reality, Give me a nod. And your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel. Then the present personality called you, raise your hand, has created the present life called your personal reality, yes or no? But if you begin over time to become conscious of your unconscious thoughts, you become aware of your automatic behaviors, how you speak, how you act, and you can look at an emotion and say, my goodness, I didn't even know this was guilt. I just, it just has felt like me my entire life. Would you agree then, the more conscious you become of those unconscious states of mind and body, the less unconscious you'll go during your waking day? Yes or no? So then most people try to create a new personal reality, a new life as the same person as the same personality, and it doesn't work. You literally have to become someone else. So of 95% of who you are by the time you're 35 years old is a set of memorized behaviors, unconscious habits, automatic emotional reactions, hardwired beliefs, perceptions, attitudes that are functioning automatically like a subconscious computer program. Then. In order for you to change, you got to get into the operating system where those automatic programs exist and become familiar with them. Yes or no? And you know, as you begin to observe those thoughts, become aware of those actions, notice those feelings, all of a sudden you're no longer immersed in the program. Your consciousness, you're no longer unconscious, you're conscious and aware. And you begin to objectify your subjective self. And if meditation means to become familiar with, then the more familiar you become with, I can't, I want to quit, this is too hard, the more aware that that is a thought standing in the way between you and something that you truly want, you'll listen less to that voice in your head in your waking day. Would you agree? And if you just said, God, it's 10 o'clock. I haven't complained. All morning, this is it's getting really hard. 
I just just want to stop that lady and just suffer and complain with her just about something. If you became conscious that your body wanted to do that, would you agree then that would be a victory in your day? And those victories add up. Would you agree? And what if, you know, you associate that person that's your best friend with suffering and the moment you see them, your body just goes, oh, this is going to be so good. Stimulus, I'm waiting for the response. The body is going to start saying, complain, complain, complain. And the brain's going to start complaining. You catch yourself doing that, that's a victory too.